Uh, well, personally for me, the reason I wanted to be involved in the film is because all throughout my, my, my time at SeaWorld, I did see things about how the company was run, what was done to the animals for the sake of entertainment that I didn't ag agree with, I didn't understand. And once Dawn was killed in 2010, I had the opportunity to reflect on my whole experience at SeaWorld. And I started to realize that everything that I thought I knew about these animals, about, about killer whales, wasn't necessarily true. It was only what the company had told me about them. And I started to do research, I started to read, I started to talk to people, scientists and journalists, and I started to realize, wow, I knew nothing about these animals. You know, I was telling the public things that were absolutely not true. And so the opportunity to be in Gabriella's movie is to set the record straight. And, for, um, and it's very rare that somebody from the company is willing to come forward and actually speak about what goes on. Um, those of us who are, most of us in the movie have been away from the company long enough and we have other careers, so we're able mm -hmm. to, to speak out with, um, you know, and, and we have something else to fall back on. Right. So, um, so for me, it's, it's this opportunity to set the record straight and also let people know what they can do to change the situation so that no more animals have to suffer in captivity like the animals that we worked with. I think one thing that is interesting or, um, is that in, in meeting with Gabriella, I don't think any one of us really knew what was the purpose and point of her film. We just knew we were there to tell our stories, to be honest and open about what we experienced. And that was refreshing. It was cathartic. Um, and yet we still really didn't have a good feel. We didn't know Gabriella really um, uh, in, at, at the beginning of things. So it was kind of like, I wonder what she's going to do with all of this. And what she's done is, is masterful, of course. but. Um, we're answering her questions just really not knowing what what is her bent maybe maybe she really likes orcas in captivity for all we know <laughs> well i think this is an entertainment industry first and foremost you know and they're they're a 2.2 billion dollar company and and so they have to portray themselves to the public in a particular way to keep those gate sales happening. So everything, a lot of the decisions that are made, um, even though they describe themselves as a zoological facility, really many, many of the decisions are made based on um, keeping the shows going, keeping the animals performing. So in a way, it has to be that way. And so if SeaWorld to, were to present some of the, the truth to the public, uh, I think that people would, would start questioning whether or not this is morally okay to have these animals in captivity purely for entertainment purposes. Right. Which is what I think you're seeing happen mm -hmm. now. Right. It's a big mm -hmm. sea change. And you know, when we were there, we were given information and there was there were there are not the resources available to us back then that there are today. So it'd be very hard to be working there now and not be able to just kinda, oh, go do some research mm -hmm. very quickly at home at night. And is that information I'm giving accurate? Um, and question it. But back then, you kind of were like given your manual and why, why would they lie? This is the information that we have. And so that's what we right. presented to the public. Right. I was kind of a low person on the totem pole when I was there at, at Shamu Stadium. So I didn't, I, I got to observe a lot of sessions with Tilikum. I didn't directly work with him because I wasn't a senior enough person, but my impression of Tilikum was that he was a really friendly, happy whale. He wanted to work. I didn't know his history, so I wasn't actually scared of him. So again, the, that what you saw in the film of me talking about management's uh, protocols for working with him didn't make sense to me based on his history. I thought that the trainer that, that, he, that he pulled in the water had actually died of hypothermia and that he actually didn't have anything to do with her death. As far as working with the other animals, I mean, I feel like and that it, it always felt to me like a, a privilege to work with the animals and it, oh, it was just something, it was fun and amazing and how lucky am, am I to get to do this job. You know, really I felt, when I, back then when I was working there, I felt like this was in some ways a dream job, but you know, now looking forward, you know, looking at after Dawn was killed and, and everything and have an I've had an opportunity to examine since her death, it's pretty clear that it was not these animals' dream to be in a small concrete tank, tank swimming with me. <laughs> so, you know, I had one impression that was going on in my head and I had all my thoughts about the animals and the relationships that I thought I had, but the truth is what I, what I thought I knew and what the animals' experience was there were two very different things. In working with the whales, um, you know, I, I think that was one of the things one of the things that that makes it a truly really challenging job to leave is you're you're completely bonded and you feel bonded you feel like you have a very special relationship with the whales that you're working with um, and and that's what makes it very difficult to leave and you saw in the film where John Jett talks about uh, you know I stayed because I needed to take care of telecom and I think that's what all of the animal trainers that are probably currently working there and when when we were working there are feeling that the trainers are the ones that are truly there because they're, they love the animals and they feel like they're the ones that should be there giving the care that the animals need. And uh, it's a very special experience. Um, it's not one that I would 
I would trade for anything. I'm grateful to have had it. Uh, um, I think you say it best in the movie. There's a there's a lot when when Carol was interviewed uh, for Anderson Cooper 360. She said what we've learned from working with these animals in mm -hmm. captivity is that they don't belong in captivity. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's what you can say as far as working with them in captivity. There isn't anything more to learn. We know that captivity does not suit them. We can probably learn a lot more in the wild. You know, there's still plenty of information we can get from right. studying these animals in the wild in their natural environment. But I don't think there's anything more that we can learn about them that we don't already know. And the message is very clear that they don't belong there.